Hi everybody, last time I stated a long theorem about uniform integrability, LP convergence and other things. In this video I'm going to start proving parts of this. The theorem we had in the previous video was this one. So suppose that you have improbability convergence and then you have these statements and the, the first three of them are equivalent and four and five each imply those three. The first one was that we have LP convergence and the second one is that Xn is P power uniformly integrable. Uh, in this video I'm going to do one implies two, so I'm going to do this proof now. Okay, so I'm going to prove that if you have improbability convergence and LP convergence, then you have uniform integrability. And I'm going to do this proof for P equals to one. So I'm going to prove the big uh, the, the big theorems one implies two statement. Okay, and I'm going to do um, this for P equals to one only. Uh, anyone interested in other P's, uh, feel free to just uh, work out the details. Okay, so we have LP convergence and and because we have LP convergence that will imply two things for us. First, if we have uh, an epsilon, fix a positive epsilon, and then for that epsilon there is a large enough n which is not random, okay, just a fixed large enough n, uh, such that we have the expectation of x minus xn mod smaller than epsilon half whenever we have an index larger than this critical capital M. Okay, this is just a simple consequence of L1 convergence. Um, Actually, I'm just proving it for p equals 1, so it's L1 convergence. Okay, so that's so far clear, I suppose. Now, with that, I'm going to pick a delta. So once this is fixed, fixed I'm going to pick a positive delta such that whenever we have uh, an event with probability less than delta, then... So whenever we have an event like that, then the expectation of xn mod under this event is less than epsilon. And this is for every n between 1 and capital N. And also the expectation of the limiting thing, x under f in the mod, of course, is less than epsilon half. Okay, so why can I do that? Why can I do that? Well, here is this lemma we proved last in, in one of these videos. There was a lemma saying that uh, if we have an L1 random variable and all of these guys are in LP, of course, because we have LP convergence, then for every epsilon there is a delta, so that whatever event you pick here with probability less than delta, expectation of X mod under that event is uh, less than epsilon. That's what I'm using here, except I'm using epsilon half in that line. And I can use that for each of the xn's. And now comes a very important remark. There is only a finite number of them. So I'm having, actually, I'm having a delta n for each of the xn's and yet another delta for the x itself due to this lemma. But it's a finite number of these deltas. They are all positive. And if I take the smallest of a finite number of deltas, it's of positive deltas, it's still a positive delta. So that's why there is a delta that works for all of these together. And for that statement, it's very important that I only have finitely many of them. If these were infinitely many, then maybe, the, maybe when I take the smallest or the infimum of the deltas, which are infinitely many, that could be zero, and then this, this would void all my statements. So it's very important at this stage that I'm only looking at finitely many of these deltas for the accents, and then if I take the smallest of them, it's still a positive delta. Okay, so that's, that's the starting point. And straight away I can then fix the following line of, of thought. Whenever n is at most big n, whenever n is at most big n, then I can apply this part of the of this, of, of this uh, observation and I'm going to pick Fn to be Xn mod being larger than k for some k 
for some k okay so that's gonna be my event which i'm going to put here now what i want to make sure of course is that this event has probability less than delta but because again i only have a finite number of these accents i can take k large enough to make these events uh, smaller than delta in probability so take this k here large enough such that the probability of each of these F fns is less than delta as required up here okay again at this moment it's very important that i can only do that for finitely many of these random variables if it would be infinitely many then maybe i this k has to be infinite and that no, nothing works but for finitely many i can look at each of these k separately and that just take the maximum of them and that works okay and as soon as i have that then life is easy because expectation of xn under this event xn larger than k is less than epsilon according to that observation here and that's uniform in n up to the big n index and that's exactly how uniform integrability was defined so i take the supremum of x mod under this event x mod larger than some constant and even if i take uh, c if i take c to infinity this goes to zero in other words for every epsilon i can take a large enough c oops you don't see that okay let me let me start over so for every for every uh, epsilon small enough i can take a, uh, every small epsilon i can take a large enough k so that xn larger than k in this indicator and together with the mod of xn under the expectation is smaller than epsilon that's what this means that's exactly what i see here for a finite n okay so for a finite n I'm, I'm done but i still need to do this whenever n is larger than that so i need to do a second part of this proof and that's where the l long convergence will come into play i need to do a second part when the index is larger than that so for n larger than big n what can i say so i'm going to start off with a triangle inequality i'm going to write the mod of xn as the mod of xn uh, minus x plus x of course i didn't do anything now this is smaller than or equal by triangle inequality then the mod of this difference and the mod of x so i'm going to start with the second bit mod of x and the mod of x minus xn of course uh, whether it's xn minus x or x minus xn doesn't matter under the absolute value so that's triangle inequality now what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this with the indicator that xn is larger than k so i have xn multiply with the indicator that xn is larger than k all right uh, indicator is never negative so it doesn't change the inequality so that's smaller than or equal to x under the indicator that xn is larger than k plus x minus xn times the indicator under the mod times the indicator that xn is larger than k and in fact i want the mods around the xn's here okay which uh, second bit is actually smaller than or equal to so i'm gonna repeat this here x under this event xn larger than k so this second bit is something non-negative times an indicator indicator is zero or one if i forget about the indicator it just makes everything larger so i'm just gonna put x minus x n okay and then finally i'm going to take an expectation in front of the whole business so if i put an expectation here and there and there then the inequality stays 
and now I can claim that each of these things is small. Each of these things is smaller than epsilon. The first uh, first uh, thing to claim is that this guy here is smaller than epsilon half. And why is that? Well, I just need to come back up here. That's because of L1 convergence. E of x minus xn is smaller than epsilon half. This is how I picked my uh, index n. And I'm doing everything for n larger than n. So that works. And then the second thing is the other term, which will also be small. Okay, so the other term is, let me just uh, copy this again. Uh, it was expectation of, let's raise this slightly higher, expectation of uh, mod of x under the event xn larger than k. Okay, that's what we had for this part here. Same thing. Okay, and why is that small? So I'm going to call this event fn. I'm going to call this event fn. The probability of fn is less than or equal. So that's the probability at xn, a positive non negative random variable larger than k. I can use just the Markov inequality is less than or equal than the expectation of my non-negative random variables, so expectation of mod x n over this bound k. And now comes an interesting fact. So I have convergence in uh, I have convergence in uh, L1. Okay. I have convergence in L1, which means that the supremum of the the supremum of the um, the supremum of the x uh, n's in L1 norm is bounded. So what I know is that I have the x n's are bounded in L1. So I know that the supremum of the ex n's is finite. The supremum of on over n. Okay, there's just some number which must be finite. So that's clearly less than or equal than that supremum of the ex uh, Maybe I should use another index here. Let's use m. Okay? Which is just a number. It's not depending on n. So in particular, I can actually make this small, smaller than delta, by just picking a large enough k. So far, I only wanted k to be large enough, well, I wanted k to be large enough for these finite ends. If this k is not large enough yet to make this smaller than delta, I, I can always increase it. So I can always say that this is smaller than delta by increasing k if necessary. Increase k if needed. And that I can do because sup of the ex is just one single number. So it's a, if it's a million, then I can make k large enough so that million over k is less than delta. Okay? And once I have that, then I can actually go back to the second part of my, of my observation here, which means that whatever event I put here with probability at most delta, smaller than delta, e of x mod under that event is less than epsilon half. So if I put this fn here with probability smaller than delta, then e of x mod under that fn will be smaller than epsilon half. So if I do all that, then this is going to be smaller than epsilon half, right? So all of that argument comes come together and uh, just makes sure that I, I have uh, that expectation is more than epsilon half. And then I'm pretty much done because I have this part here smaller than epsilon half. I just did that. I have this other part smaller than epsilon half. So my whole expression now is smaller than epsilon half. So what I conclude here is that expectation of xn mod under this event xn larger than k is less than epsilon half for one part and epsilon half for the other part. Uh, 
XL mode here. Just copying uh, these bits here and the two epsilon half bits there. And uh, that's, that's what I wanted because that exactly means that if I pick a small enough epsilon, I can find a large enough k so that this is uniformly true across all n's. Across all n's. For finite n, for n smaller than this big n, I proved it here. For n larger than big n, I proved it here and there. And so this works for all n. That's exactly uniform integrability.